Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to NPTEL MOOC's course on Developing Soft Skills and Personality. I am Professor T. Ravichandran from the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, IIT Kanpur. We are on the third week of uh, this course and we are almost in the middle of the third week. Already three lectures have uh, been covered under uh, habits. This week exclusively I am focusing on habits because as I have been telling you in the introductory lecture that it is the habit that you form is going to make or more your career as well as your life. So, we have been talking about uh, habits, the significance and all that. In this lecture particularly, I am going to focus on the reasons why we are not able to break bad habits, particularly the emotionally uh, sort of uh, emotional breakups which have given you the bad habits, so which you are not able to break so easily. So, that is something that I want to focus on uh, in this module. And before I start, <coughs> let us take a quick highlights of what I did in the last lecture. In the last lecture, I discussed about the importance of forming good habits because everything we do happens to be part of our habit formation. Whether it is getting up in the bed, the first thing that you do in the morning until the end when you go back to it, if you look at it, every small thing that you do, the way you are getting up okay, and after getting up, what do you do? So, you have a cup of coffee or you do not have it, you just look up your uh, uh, favorite god or you just listen to music or you just meditate or you just walk, go out, what do you do? or you just check mails or you just see the updates on Facebook or WhatsApp or you just make phone calls. What do you do as soon as you get up? Most of the things are just habits. And then even the route in which you go to your uh, department, college, okay, that again becomes a kind of habit. You prefer the same route and then you keep going on that again and again. And then when you come back to the bed, so, how many pillows do you use for sleeping? So, do, do you cover yourself or not? So, how do you lie on the bed? Sideways, facing up, facing down. So, all these things again is something that you initially did not give a thought to it, but then slowly started forming it. And then while lying on the bed, do you have to make some movement? Do you have to shake your body, move your legs so that you uh, feel sleepy? or can you just remain passive and then you get the sleep? Do you get up frequently when you are in sleep or you can be in uh, deep sleep? So, all these things are actually part of your habit and then I talked about the habit cycle. So, which starts with a kind of thought or stimulus and then continues with the action reaction that you give to it and then you get a reward or punishment and based on which you form the habit which determines your character as well as personality. Again, you reinforce this with another action or reaction contributing to your success or failure in life. Now, I also talk to you about the decision to change. You know that you have accumulated lot of bad habits, but uh, would you like to change and what will give you that decision? So, in that context, I was referring to the small anecdote from R. K. Narayan's guide in which the character Raju decides to change from a sinner to a martyr and a saint. Now, that transformation comes to him even after spending decades of his life as a kind of sinner, as a thief and all that and he even he spent some time in the prison and that comes at a very crucial moment and the lessons that we learned from that was that circumstance is not something that actually makes a man, it reveals him. 
So, it is the circumstance that will tell you whether you are becoming a sinner or a saint. It reveals the inner core in you and that kind of change that comes and then goes to the intrinsic value in you. So, that will remain forever. And then I also concluded by saying that writers, uh, especially the modern writers uh, had a kind of gloomy view about man and William Golding particularly uh, in Lord of the Flies, he asserted that the beast is within us. That is all the animal qualities, all the bad qualities, evil qualities, he said, are all within us. But if you look at the way Arkenarayan concluded the novel, he seemed to implying that the God is also within us. <coughs> so, the conclusion, if you understand that God and beast are metaphor for forming good habits and bad habits. So, you understand that the ability to form bad habits as well as good habits lies within us. Now, let us analyze the fundamental question. Why is it that some are able to change their habits in a lightning second, just like Raju, although he took two days to decide, but still he was able to change a habit that he, that he was used to, he was able to control the craving for eating and others are not able to do that in ages. Some people even after trying so many years, they are not able to change and some people just in a lightening moment, just one uh, second they think I will change and then they quit and then they completely change. Now, what is it responsible? Where is the answer uh, lying in? The answer lies in something called dopamine. So, but before I go to that, now how can they actually change? Now, first thing they need is, uh, it depends on their level of self-awareness. So, how much they are aware about themselves. In the introductory uh, week, so one of the lectures was focused on developing your self-awareness, asking probing questions about your merits and demerits and understanding what is really good and what is really bad and uh, choosing your goals and acting accordingly. And I also talk to you about perceptions. Now, some people perceive a bad habit correctly as a bad habit and they know that it is really harmful, but some others are not able to identify that it is a bad habit and then uh, despite its short gains or rewards, they are not able to come out of this short gain and think about long term uh, rewards. Now, most of these rewards are linked with dopamine. Now, if you understand this part of our brain, we will be able to more or less control bad habits and try to develop good habits. Now, dopamine is a neurotransmitter of human brain that is linked with motivation and reward. It means that it is responsible for motivation and reward. It is also uh, called as the motivation molecule. It is actually a chemical that induces pleasure. You get a feeling that you won a lottery. So, even that something sparks in your brain and makes you feel happy, it says that you are now happy, you just go and celebrate. You get sweets and give it to people and make others happy. It gets released every time you feel joyful about something you have done. Now, the interesting part of this dopamine is it gets released whether you do something based on a good habit or even on a bad habit. So, it does not make a difference. Now, why should we know more about dopamine? Because it plays a crucial role in forming addictive habits. Again, whether good or bad, it plays a crucial role in forming it. Particularly in terms of bad habits, certain drugs stimulates its production. So, use of certain drugs actually causes the secretion of dopamine in the brain, leading to high levels of activity and causing ecstasy. So, you are in a state of euphoria when you are able to take some drugs which induces dopamine and makes you feel that euphoric state. But its leaving will cause depression or slowing down of energy 
since it is leaving is doing this, the brain quickly learns to seek those kind of uh, drugs that will stimulate production leading to addiction. It means since you are used to one kind of drug that will produce this dopamine and then gives you that euphoric feeling, the withdrawal, the leaving of that will make you feel somewhat low in energy, sometimes even uh, somewhat depressed. So, brain starts seeking actively to those kind of drugs that will stimulate this production. So, that is the problem with brain. And then once you start going for the drug again and again, you are making that as an addictive bad behavior. While dopamine seeks those activities that gives you pleasure, it also motivates you to avoid unpleasant experiences. So, on the one hand, it tries to give you those activities that will give you pleasure, but it also motivates you to avoid unpleasant experiences. So, for example, you know that you have not done the job, so the boss is going to shout at you. Okay. So, colleagues tell you, oh, you take this drug, you take this drinks. So, when you go and face the boss, even if he is shouting at you, so you will not feel it. So, you will not feel uh, very sensitive about it and it would not hurt you. Okay. So, try that. Now, you want to avoid unpleasant experiences. So, then again uh, uh, you try to produce that using uh, drugs. Thus, bad habits are usually formed in those circumstances where it is easy to seek pleasure by which you are also able to avoid painful or disagreeable experiences at least for the time being. Okay. Now, let us understand more about dopamine and let us see how we can counter it, what, what we can do in order to counter especially in terms of forming this addictive behavior. Apparently, it looks difficult, but it is not impossible. Accepting for example, that sad and depressive times are part of our lives. So, that itself will make us not to seek pleasure even when we are in our low times. We need to understand that they are normal and are required to experience the happiness of best times. If you have endless holidays, okay, you feel sick of them and you would like to go to job. And the other way around, if you if you are working without any leave, you long for holidays. Okay. So, life is a perfect mixture of happiness and sorrow. So, if you all the time seek only happiness in the form of pleasure and if you want to avoid sorrow, so that is going to make your brain seek more and more of bad habits that will produce dopamine in you. So, accepting that sad and depressive times are part of our lives is one important thing that we should keep in our mind. And then we have to understand that agony that is great pain, even if it precedes it intensifies the experience of ecstasy that comes later. You know great sorrow, only then you are able to understand great amount of joy. So, allow yourself to experience great pain before, so that you can experience greater joy later. And then auto telling our brain, people call that as self hypnosis. So, telling something to our mind all the time that something is good, a job is easy, something will work better for us. Now, in this case, telling our brain that it is ok to be unhappy because you can say that I want that so that I can experience happiness later. So, it is cool, I am unhappy, I am depressed, but what? So, I will experience it so that I will enjoy the happy moments that come later. Instead of thinking that, oh I am depressed, so I will go to drugs or I will not do any other work. I will just stop, I will just go walk alone, I will alienate myself and then I will do nothing. Now, the next thing that you can do is reinforcing in the mind that you will stay calm and cool despite testing moments. 
telling your mind again and again, even if it is a testing time, I will remain cool and calm, nothing can affect you and overall trying to visualize a fulfilling and meaningful life for the future. So, that will reduce the brain to seek for those things that will make you develop bad habits and then make you a slave to them in the long run. So, think of uh, these things whenever you are in the negative tendency to produce dopamine using some bad habits. Now, let us focus on the unhappiness that normally comes out of emotional breakups. Now, before I go to this, I want you to understand another interesting psychological aspect of our human brain and its tendency in working in terms of completing a task or not completing. I want you to understand this term called the Zigarnik effect, the Zigarnik effect. The Zigarnik effect highlights a compulsive need to complete, it is a need to complete, just like need to achieve, it is a need to complete. Now, what is this need to complete? The need to complete a task once it has been initiated. Incompletion of it leads to intrusive thoughts in the brain which can stop only when the person returns to complete the task. This means, if you start a task and then you leave it somewhere in between and then you go and start some other task. Now, when you do this task, thoughts of the previous one that was left uncompleted will come and hijack your brain. It will keep coming until you go back and complete the task, you will not be able to focus on the other task that you have taken. So, this effect, so is called as this Zigarnik effect, uncompleted tasks will stay on your mind until you finish them. Now, that is the reason why emotional breakups are causes for long time unhappiness. Why? So many tasks like let us say, uh, let us say become uh, the situation of a boy and girl who are in love with each other and then they wanted to get married. Now, let us say they were in a relationship for about 3 years and they were planning so many things. They are planning to have children, they were planning to move to a different place, they were planning to uh, buy a kind of car. Now, all this planning that was done together for their entire life, even if it is done mentally and certain things which have started already, now they remain incomplete the day a person decides to leave the other person. For whatever reason it may be, once one person leaves the other one, the other one keeps thinking, why? Why did she leave me? And the girl uh, thinks that, why did this man leave me? Is the other girl looking better? Is she more intelligent? Or am I not loving him enough? What went wrong? Now, in all these things, in a sense, this Zigornik effect is happening. The thoughts go back to the old moments again and again because so many promises which were made are remaining incomplete. Who gave this term? So, this is Bloomer Zigarnik, the Russian psychologist. She first described the Zigarnik effect in her 1927 doctoral thesis and then the uh, simple definition that we get from PsychWiki.com, it says that the Zigarnik effect is the tendency to experience intrusive thoughts about an objective that was once pursued and left incomplete. The automatic system signals the conscious mind which may be focused on new goals that a previous activity was left incomplete. It seems to be human nature to finish what we start and if it is not finished, we experience dissonance. So, dissonance is disharmony. So, we feel that we are completely in disorder. So, we, we that is emotionally, mentally and even sometimes physically we feel that there is something that is troubling us 
and the thoughts which keep coming to our mind saying that oh that is still unleft and that we will remember more than a thought of something that has been completed. So, that is the other implication of uh, this uh, zygornic effect that you will always remember uncompleted tasks, the incomplete activities much more than the one that you complete. In fact, sometimes you do not even remember the task that you complete. Now, how do we deal with emotional breakups the dopamine way? How do we do that? Now, mind treats an emotional breakup as an uncompleted task as so many activities were planned with a particular partner till the end of one's life and career. Buying a house, both of them planned, they even went and gave the money, they decided how they will pay the installments. Okay. Now, one of them decides to leave, take divorce. Now, the remaining thing falls entirely on the other person. The till the time the person is paying the installment and then uh, trying to occupy the house, even after occupying the house, the feeling will be there all the time that this is something we planned together to complete and then it remains incomplete with the other person's contribution. Now, that is the reason why it is difficult for many to come out of emotional breakups. But what could be the solution? How are we going to deal with this? How, how do we do deal with this using the dopamine way? Now, the only solution is to give it a symbolic completion, literally burning or burying any remnants. For example, photographs that will induce the memory of the person, letters they, uh, that gave some promises or planning that was involved messages indicating this, all the things if it could be burnt, so that the brain gets a feeling that the work has been complete, now finishing has been given and the message of completion is going to the brain in the patterning and then it decides that okay, now I can move forward uninterruptedly and peacefully. Okay. In fact, it is also better not to go back to the same place. So, where uh, uh, the couple or uh, uh, the lovers frequented before. So, revisiting the places where one used to frequent together will only result in dopamine craving and subsequent alienation. So, you whenever the uninterrupted thoughts come to your mind, the brain is telling you like causing you the dopamine craving or oh, go back to the place. Now, it will make you feel very happy, go back, get a feeling, get back your uh, happy moments. So, you go there, but then when you go there, you realize that the person who shared the happy moment is not there. So, what is happening? Subsequent withdrawal and alienation. You then do not feel like talking to anybody because you get a feeling that without that particular person, you can never be happy. So, it is important to start a different routing with a different goal. So, just completely reorient yourself, have a different goal, associate with a different person or with a different activity. For instance, during the depressive time, you overate and then you completely gain lot of weight and then you start hating yourself, uh, particularly physically. You do not want to see anybody socially because you feel that people will make fun of you. Now, one of the new goals could be keeping fit or trying creative writing, write poems, make the very bad moment a poetically renderable, beautiful moment and make the other people, your audience empathize with that moment. So, that transformation can again make you sublimate and then complete all the uninterrupting activities which appear to be incomplete. So, this will also release a new set of dopamine every time a goal is achieved. Every time you write a short story based on your experiences, every time you write a poem, every time you do a painting or every time you just try to increase your fitness level. 
So, anything that you take up or you think that you will learn a new language, anything that you do, when you try to finish it, so dopamine will uh, come to your rescue and then it will make you feel good. But reminding of the bad things the other person did for you will help minimize the dopamine craving for the lost idyllic times and euphoric moments. Okay. Now, keep this in mind and try in case of any kind of uh, emotional uh, breakups. And then towards conclusion, I just want to conclude with this thought from uh, Dalai Lama. He says that remember that sometimes not getting what you want is a wonderful stroke of luck. Now, all the time you have been thinking that you want something or you want the relationship of someone, some particular person and you think that you will be lucky if you actually had this person in your life. But to the other hand, Dalai Lama says that you need to remember that sometimes not getting what you want is a wonderful stroke of luck. You realize later in your life that, okay, if I had got that person, my life would not have moved this way and I would not have found this other person. I would not have changed my life in the other desirable way that I intended to happen. Again, just to recall another famous quote from Sigmund Freud, he says that sometimes in retrospect, it is the bad times, okay, the times of struggle, he says that appears to be our most happiest ones. Okay. But during the time when we were in struggle, we were always thinking that it was such depressive moment. But then when we come out of it and when we look at the struggle that we had, he says that those times appear to be the happiest ones. Think about these two thoughts and then just try to first handle any kind of emotional situations that is trying to cause you to go to addictive habits. Stop that and then form a good habit, change the routine, change the pattern and then try to rewire your brain and then restart a new life in which let us say dopamine helps you to come out of it. So, with this thought, I will conclude this lecture and then I will continue with how you can develop new habits, particularly the good ones and then more on this uh, jigarnik effect in the next lecture. Thank you for watching this video.